Hi, this session will cover the first index law, which involves multiplying powers. Okay, before we start, let's just recap on a few important key terms and um, things like that. So, if I have, for example, x to the power of 3, um, we know that little 3 here, we can call it a power, or to the power of, which is where we get bod mass, or we can call it an index number. Okay? Plural, it's indices. And later on, when you get to you know, year 10 and so on, it's also called the exponent. Exponent. Um, so there's some keywords used to describe the same number. Now, the larger number on the bottom, we call this the base or the base number. Okay? Um, and the base number can be a variable. I can have, for example, 2 to the power of 2. 2 is my base number. So the base can be numerical or it can be a variable. Now if I have 2 to the power of 3, I know that this is saying 2 times 2 times 2. Um, not, we know it's not saying 2 times 3. Um, and if I wrote 2 times 2 times 2 first, this will also give me 2 to the power of 3. So it's, it has been simplified. But my question is, what has actually happened to get this 3? It's sitting up above the 2. Um, and this is where the first index law comes in. What is happening is there is an invisible power above each of these 2s, and that is the power 1. Just like we have 2 sitting there, we know that 2 can also be written as 2 over 1, but that 1 is invisible. So we know with our fraction skills, that will just equal 2. So the same sort of idea, but in this case, we're looking at powers. Um, so every number, if there isn't a power shown already, the number the power is actually 1. Um, and what happens is, to get this 3, we simply have to add these powers of the same base. So we can see the same base, 2, 2, and 2, is being multiplied. So we can add the powers of, in this case, 2. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Um, and that is how we get our 3. So let's write an important point down. So. If you haven't got this written down somewhere already, please write it down. Um, when multiplying, you can only add the powers of the same base. That's really important, okay? So the same base. So let's have a look and see what that exactly means. So here's um, another question. So what I want you to do, work it out the way you think is best. Um, and I'm going to show you two ways on how to work this out. Um, so if I look at this question, I look at this and I see 2 to the power of 3 and 2 to the power of 2. Um, and I can go, well, 2 to the power of 3 is saying 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, times. And then 2 um, to the power of 2 is saying 2 times 2, which is 4. And 8 times 4 is 32. So that is one way of working it out. Um, we cannot go, keep in mind, we cannot go 2 times 2 the time, we, we can't multiply the base numbers first, okay? We have to first evaluate. In this case, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, and then 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Just remember that. But using the index law now, I can do this another way. Because we have the same base, so 2 is here and 2 is here, it's a numerical base, so numbers are involved, but 2 is the same, we can now add those powers. So what I the, the base won't change, so in my answer, 2 will be there. But I add the powers of both of these two. So I've got 3 plus 2 is 5. Um, now I've simplified that, but to show, I need to now evaluate to show how we get 32. So that is saying 2 times 2 times 2, 5 times. And 2 to the power of 5 is actually 32. So we can see how there are now two ways we can do this. We can do it sort of the old way where we just exp um, expanded the powers and worked it out. But now we can use the index law to assist us. And this is important when it comes to algebra, because with algebra, we don't know what the values actually are. OK, so try this question first and have a go. Um, so with this one, my first step is look at your base, your base numbers. And I can see I've got the same base numbers with my a's. a is the same and a is the same. So I can simplify those. And b, that's a b, and it's just sitting there on its own. So I know there's also a positive one here and a positive one there that's invisible. So I'll make them visible just to 
to, the, to make it clear for myself. And now I add the powers of the same base. So with my A, I write my A base down, um, and one plus two is just three. That's it. And then we still have times B, so I'll bring the times B down. We can't add the power of the B and the A because they are different base numbers. So our final answer will be A to the power of three times B. We know there's an invisible times in there, okay? And that's how we write our final answer. Okay, let's look at our next question. Now this one is starting to look a little bit different because we can now see there are whole numbers. So we're multiplying algebra. If you remember from last year, you multiply your numbers as normally, your whole numbers. Um, so I've got a two here and a four, and there's an invisible one there. So two times four times one, that is just a positive eight. Everything is positive, we may see negatives later. But now to work on my bases, I've got a to the power of one there, and b to the power of one, and then b to the power of seven. So I can see there are no other a's in this whole expression, so I'll put my a down there, it stays the same. Um, and if it helps, cross off what you have used. And now I've got b to the power of one times b to the power of seven. So I'll put my b down, and now that index law, I add the powers. One plus seven is eight, and that's our answer. Okay, and you might start to realize in our answers when doing this, the base, the, or the bases are always there. The, the, the whole numbers change if we are multiplying them, but the bases should always be in your answer. So I'll show you that trick in the next question. Okay, if we have a look at our next question, um, this is actually x to the power of seven. Sorry if it's not clear. Um, and we can see that we're starting to get a lot more variables. Um, and sometimes you might think, oh, it looks difficult. But it's actually really easy. And I'll show you the best way to do to approach longer questions like this. And that is, first check your operation. Yes, we are multiplying, which means we are adding the powers of the same base numbers, or variables in this case. Um, so your first tip is write down all the different variables you see. So I see I've got an A in the whole thing, I've got an X somewhere, and I've got a Y. Are there any more different variables you can see? No. So that's going to be in your answer. Now, there are no whole numbers to multiply, no numbers on the outside to multiply. So that's done. Um, it's all positive. And now simply add the powers of the same variables, the same base. So I've got a three, working with my A, there's an A there and an A there. So I've got three plus, we know it's an invisible one. Three plus one is four, and that's done. And cross it off once you have used that. Um, my X, I've got X to the power of two and X to the power of seven. Seven plus two is nine, and we're done. So cross that off. And last of all, I've got Y to the power of, there's an invisible one, plus two. So one plus two is three. And that's our answer. You can see how we're multiplying the base numbers um, will be in your answer. Unless, of course, th there's a zero involved. But in this case, that's how easy it is. Okay, so have a go at this one and, and see how you go first. So my first step in this case is, yes, check what operation are we using. Everything is being multiplied. That's your first check. Next, multiply, oh sorry, next is your answer going to be a positive or a negative? Because we're multiplying or dividing, you can find that out straight away. Um, and I'll have a look at this. There is one negative in the whole thing. One is an odd number, that means my answer will be a negative. Okay, so that's taken care of. Next, multiply your numbers. So two times, there's a two and a four, so two times four is just eight. And my numbers have been taken care of. And now I'm going to take care of my variables. Now I'm going to see what different types of variables or letters do we have. We've got the C, there's a B, there's a Y. And they will be my answer. So I'll write those down. And now I will add the powers of the same base and we're done. So let's have a look. I've got C, I'll work on my C's first. So I might use a different color. So there's my C and a C there, and that's it. So 2 plus 10, add the powers. 2 plus 10 is 12. Done. C is gone. B, I've got B to the power of 1. Are there any other Bs in this expression? No. So B just stays like that. 
You can show a one if you want to, but it's really invisible. So B stays the same. And my Y, once again, there's no other Y, so my Y stays the same. And that's our final answer. So if you follow those steps, which I'll write down later on, um, you can't go wrong. So these are the steps that, are, that you should follow and you won't make any mistakes. If you want to write, write them down, please do. Um, and we'll just go over them again. So the first step is, is the answer going to be a positive or a negative? So remember, an odd amount of negatives will give you a negative answer. An even amount will be positive. That's your first step. Next, multiply any numbers that you may have. Um, get them out the way. Then your next step is write down the different variables in the question. Okay, so if there's an A, a B, a T, write them down first. And then your final step is add the powers of the same variables or the same base. Um, and that's how easy it is. So let's try another example. Okay, um, I also forgot to mention, I always forget what number I'm up to. So I guess this one was seven. I'm probably wrong, so I'm sorry. <laughs> now, I want you to have a go at this question first um, and follow those steps. Okay, so hopefully you, you wrote them down. So my first step is, Take care of any negatives. So I can see that there are two negatives in this whole expression. Two is an even number, so that means my answer will be positive. And they're done. I don't have to worry about the negatives anymore. Next step is to multiply any numbers. So I've got a two here times a three times a two. So two times three is six, and six times two is 12. Numbers are taken care of. I can cross them off. Next step is write down any variables that we have, all the different variables. So I've got an X, a Y, there's an A, and there's also a T. I can't see any more different ones, and I'll stop there. Um, at this stage, don't worry about the order. If you have time, in maths, we write them in alphabetical order. But it's still the correct answer, so I'm not too fussy about that at this stage. So our next step is... Work with one variable at a time and add the powers. So I'm going to work with my x because it's first. I've got an x here that's to the power of 1. That's invisible. I've got another x here to the power of 3. So I'm going to add the, the powers. So 1 plus 3 is 4. And x is done. Next variable, y. I've got a y here, one y there to the power of 1. And I've got a seven, oh, seven y's here. Y to the power of 7. So 1 plus 7 is just 8. And my Y's are taken care of. Next variable is an A. I've got A to the power of 2 here. No more A's I see in the question. So it stays 2. So A to the power of 2 stays the same. And then I've got, last of all, a T. T is just there by itself. It's to the power of 1, but there's no other T's to add with this one. So we're done. T can stay the same. And everything's being crossed off, and that's our final answer. Now, this question um, looks different to the other ones, and that's because the power has a negative 2. We haven't seen powers yet with a negative number, um, and that's okay. We still follow the same index law. Add the powers of the same base. So this one is a bit easier than the other ones we've had. So my base, in this case, I've just got an A, and now I will add the powers of... Oh, so I will add the powers. And that is simply minus 2 plus 3. So minus 2 plus 3, you can put it in your calculator. We you can calculate it mentally. I know it will give me a positive 1. So my final answer is just A. So whenever you have a negative, don't panic. Just do the same thing. Add the powers of the same base. So have a go at this one. Now, first step is there are no negatives um, no, no big negatives. I know there's a negative power, but there's no actual negative numbers, whole numbers. Um, so I'll now write down my, um, and there's no numbers to multiply. So now I'll write down the different base or variables I have. I've got A and T in the whole thing. There's nothing else. And now I will add the powers of the same base. So here for my A, I'll focus on my A first. I've got a positive 2 minus 1. So I've got to add them. So what is 2 plus a minus 1? Well, a positive and a negative make a negative. And 2 minus 1 is just 1. So a is to the power of 1. That was pretty easy. And then I can cross my a's off. And now I've got t times t, which is now 1 plus 1 for its powers, which gives me 2 uh, squared. So my final answer is a, 
and then t to the power of 2. Okay, so don't be scared of negatives. Now, sometimes we can have, we have to simplify using the first index law when we have um, a fraction, so something in fraction form. So with this question here, just simplify the top, simplify the bottom, and we're done. Okay, for this one. Um, when we learn the negative index law um, and simplifying fractions, that's where we can take extra steps. But at this stage, this is all we've got to do. So I've got x to the power of 1 and x to the power of 1 there and x to the power of 3. So I add the powers of that base x and on the bottom I have a y. So 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5 and 2 plus 1, let's see, don't forget the invisible one, 2 plus 1 is 3. Now there is nothing else at this stage we can simplify but like I said later on we'll be learning how to simplify fractions. But that's it. Now this is our last question for this session um, and I tried to make it as long as possible. I could have made it longer but I had no room so you're kind of lucky. But have a go and follow those important steps in case you get stuck. So I'll get started. My first step is take care of the negatives, um, the large negatives. Is it going to be a negative answer or a positive answer? Well let's have a look. I've got one negative there and one negative there. So the whole thing, there are two negatives in the whole thing, which means my answer will be positive. Done. Next, multiply any whole numbers. I've got 6 times 5. So 6 times 5 is 30. And my numbers are taken care of. Next, I am going to write down the different variables that I have. So I've got an A there, I've got a B, there's another A, I've got a Y, that's different. I also have an X. They are the different variables that I can see. I write them down once, and now I will add the powers of the same base. So A, starting with my A, there's an A there, an A there, and an A there. So add the powers. There's a 1 there. So 1 plus 7 is 8, and 8 plus 3 is 11. So I have A to the power of 11. I'll change my color for, for B. So B, I've got 3 there, and I'll have a look. There's nothing else. So B actually stays the same because there was nothing else to add with it. There's no other B variable. All right, and next one. Now, I forgot to cross my A's off because they were done. Next one, Y, I've got 1 there, so Y to the power of 1 and Y to the power of 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. And that's taken care of. And last of all, I've got an X. An X is just sitting by itself. There's no other X's, so X stays the same. And that's our final answer. Okay? And remember, there's multiplication in between everything. That's now invisible. So when we simplify our answers, we don't write multiplication. So they should be, so just remember they're invisible there. So I'll write them out. And that's it. So the more you practice this, the better you become. But please, if you follow those steps, you can't go wrong. Thank you.